I'm conscious of the time, so I'm just going to ask you three more questions, and then we're going to have some questions from 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 the floor. Yeah. And and the first one is you you were a double rebel. You know, you're you're a naughty boy, Dennis. You went off and you joined Packer. Well, naughty boy in the inverted commas Lord's definition of what a naughty boy is. And then of course you went on the the rebel South African tour as well. I. I I'd like to know what what good you think Packer did for the game, um, what because it was the game was stuck in many ways, wasn't it? Players underpaid and so on. What what impact did he have? What were the consequences of Packer? Were they all good? Were they all bad? How did you feel about that? Um, why did you sign for him as well? Well, I, I wanted to be one of the sixty best cricketers in the world who would go to play World Series cricket and. Uh, I didn't. I didn't like that everybody else had been invited, and I and I hadn't. And I thought I'd come to the end of end of my played fifty Test matches. I thought I'd come to the end of my England career, in and out, that sort of thing. So I thought that um, here was an opportunity of getting uh, some security uh, with my family. Um, so I thought that uh, um, is an opportunity. And I scored a hundred in a, in a one day international against Australia at the Oval, and. Uh, um, Kerry, Greg, he said to me, Kerry said at the, at, the, at the Grosvenor Hotel, he said, he would like to see you. I went there and Richie Benno was there. And I had a lot of time for Richie anyway, top, top man. And um, um, Kerry was, you know, very businesslike and they, everything and told me what, what was going to happen. And Richie Benno was the one that really sold it to me. Um, and there was an opportunity of, of earning some money. And uh, oh, 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 we went out and... Uh, it was difficult because we were a world 11 that world 11 we weren't an england side we, we had uh, mushtak and zahir great cricketers barry richards um um graham pollock uh dennis hobbs leg spinner from south africa uh we had imran in the side uh, and greggy underwood not warmer snow in, in in the england in the in the world 11 side so but it was not the easiest of 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 trips but the wives were looked after they were meant to feel, you know, part of it and welcome, which 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 it was, and we had uh, two years there, and um, yeah, and uh, I went through a pretty tough time because Warwickshire took a really tough stance uh, over me going to uh, you know, World Series cricket because they were very much entrenched at Lords in, in the in the establishment and the running of the game, and they took a very Tough stance of that, I mean, and they were trying to um, um, finish. My didn't want me to play anymore for them, so that was uh, um, very difficult. Um, but um, there was some coming together by by Kerry and the, the establishments of Australian cricket and English cricket. And Jack Bannister was chairman of the Professional Cricket Association. They said, Dennis, he said. Um, we're going in to see Alan Smith and uh, Cyril Goodway, chairman of Warwickshire, <clears throat> AC Smith uh, secretary. And I said, well, what good is done? I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm finished and I'm not going to get a contract. He said, no, we're going in to see them. And we went in to see them. <clears throat> and Jack, in the end, said, if there is a deal done between Kerry Packer and the establishments of the cricket, um, will you give Dennis Amos a contract? And... Um, AC, I think, I probably chatted with Jack a little bit about it, and uh, AC turned to sort of go there and said, uh, "I think, Chairman, we can, we should do that," and uh, sort of agreed. Uh, so, if there was a coming together and a sorting out, then I got a contract, and I came out, and I and Jack went, "Yes," I said, "What's that about?" He said, "There's a deal to be done between um, Kerry Packer and uh, the cricket establishments, and." Uh, you got a contract. So um, little did I know that how close Jack Bannister was with Richie Benno. Richie Benno, of course, was Kerry's right-hand man in World Series cricket. And uh, uh, they spoke every Saturday discussing horse racing, whether it was in England or Australia. And they sought out their horses. And Richie said to, to, to Jack, he said, uh, if Dennis Amos gets a contract, um, Kerry Packer um, will sign this agreement. Yeah. So uh, I was, I was the, the thorn in the middle, yeah. uh, but eventually it all sorted itself out. Mm -hmm. So when we come and we look at World Series cricket, what did it do for the game? Well, 
we started the first floodlit match, didn't we, at Edgbaston? And that was my experience of playing floodlit cricket over there, which was, uh, you know, I didn't play in every match, but I had a lot of experience of, of what was happening. So we put on the first floodlit match and we had 18,000 people at, again, at Warwickshire v Somerset at Edgbaston, which was wonderful. The temporary lights, which was thing. And um, I mean, before Kerry Packer, came along Will says cricket the, the test match players were paid 250 pounds for five days work after the court case where Kerry Packer won the court case for the players because it was restraint of trade what, what was happening to us and we could play play anywhere in the world that it's unless we were under contract um and it was two two thousand five hundred pounds and now I, I don't know what it is now but per, per, per test match but uh um, it's certainly a lot more than that now because that's a long time ago um, so that was better um, uh, things like tours um, families were welcome at a certain certain time of, of the of the tours mainly at Christmas time they came out and uh, they were I don't know how long they came out for but two or three weeks something like that maybe um, and uh, yeah we, we, we floodlit cricket yeah, uh, clothing, white balls, um, IPL came from it. Yeah, the hundreds coming from IPL. You know, we're moving that way, aren't we? To 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 that 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 type of cricket and uh, coloured clothing, white ball. Yeah. We, we we tried a yellow ball first of all in World Series cricket under floodlights, and we found that under floodlights at night, that the yellow ball with the green grass, you couldn't see it as well as you could with a white ball. And that's why we started white ball. I mean, helmets came out of it. <laughs> I started yeah. the helmets and um, I took a motorcycle helmet with a polycarbonate visor, take a double barrel shotgun from 10 paces. So take a fast bowler from 22 yards. And um, the first match I went out in it, they said, hey, Amy, switch your motorbike, mate. And, uh, and then we had the, those, uh, those run outs in the first world game against Australia. And we had four runouts, and Richie picked it up. He said, They can't hear the calls. There's no holes in the earpieces. And Nutty was the last one to come out. He still had his helmet on. They sent an interviewer down to interview him because they, they, they thought that Richie spotted it. And they said, Alan, will you run out because you can't hear the calls because there's no holes in the earpieces? And Alan, not sitting in front of everybody, you have to speak up. I can't hear a darn thing in these helmets. Well, and, well, could, and you couldn't. So we, and we, yeah. we, 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 cleared, we put holes in the earpieces and the helmets, and we never had another run out. But uh, Richie was picked it up. So yeah, lot, lot, lots of lot, lots of good things uh, uh, came out of it afterwards, and uh, um, it changed it changed the game for forever. I, I should think. Yeah. And you suffered the consequences. I mean, you were you were sent to Coventry. You've held your peace about which members of the Warwickshire side sent you to Coventry, you, you've never said anything about that. But there was this, eventually the rapprochement, you, 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 you came back in from the cold as it were, and you became the most successful chief executive officer that Warwickshire, in Warwickshire's history, and perhaps some would argue in county cricket's history. Um, Warwickshire winning the treble, followed by the double, um, nine trophies in however many years and the second London Championship. Of those achievements, Dennis, which one do you think is, is, is the greatest? What is your chief executive officer? What, what was your biggest achievement at Warwickshire, do you think? I think that probably the, uh, the, the 1994 season, the triple trophy year was, was, was uh, absolutely brilliant. And we got to the final, didn't we? Of, uh, of the fourth one as well, and uh, as we all know, it could have happened if we'd have won the toss. We'd, we'd have uh, batted second, but uh, Worcester won the toss, and uh, well, that's it's arguable whether we'd, we'd have won it, but we could have won four. But anyway, we won three. Brian Lara, what you know, and, and we signed him before he scored his 360, 65. So instead of costing us over a hundred thousand, he cost us about forty, I think. Um, but uh, anyway, he he made up for that later on, and. Uh, um, that was just uh, uh, brilliant. I have to say that um, that my first test match, if you remember, it was against West Indies as chief exec, and Rousey, the groundsman, had sat on that roller, that three-ton roller, for, for, for the, the best part of three months or four months, and he said he wanted it rock hard. He said he wanted it rock hard, and the first ball went over Robin Smith's head, I, th I think, 
it was Robin Smith's head and hit the pickets on the half volley. Dennis Silk, chairman of the board, England West people said, I've never ever seen anything like that before. And I said, well, you should have been in Australia against Lillian Thompson. I said, it happened every over. <laughs> But but uh, um, I, I just not. It was a terrible wicket. And Robin was it all over the place. The test match finished on the Saturday before lunch. And I just, as soon as it finished at that moment, I just thought the crowd were, were going to come and lynch us. And somebody, uh, some bright spark of the England Wales cricket board said, let's, th let's let them onto the pitch. And of course, that took the steam out of it. And they came onto the pitch and it was such a beautiful day. And they, they just sat and had picnics on the outfield and kept them off the square. I think that that's that saved us. But, um, you know, I had a letter uh, from the England World Cricket Board and to say that uh, if our wickets didn't improve, we were in the danger of losing Test Match Cricket, which, which we could not do. Yeah. And uh, so um, I said to Rassi, I called Rassi and I said, uh, Rassi, the wicket's got to change, mate. I'm sorry, you, you cannot have, we cannot have wickets like that. You and I are history. If you produce another wicket like that, you and I are gone. And uh, I think that got to him, that he wasn't going to have a job. And I said, uh, um, get the wickets flat. And, uh, and he did. I th and I think we saved Test Match. We did save Test Match cricket at Edgbaston. And um, um, that was one thing that I was, I was quite quite proud of doing because, you you know, we couldn't afford to, to lose Test Match cricket. We're a big ground. How are you going to if you lose Test Match cricket? You need the income to keep going, to build better stadiums and... Yeah. improve facilities and improve your your your, 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 uh, your capacities and everything so um it was vital vital that we kept test match cricket so i was really proud of that as and, and but obviously i think that that 1994 season with lara and uh, we had a great side mm. uh the, the smalls the muntons the moles uh the pennies i mean uh um just uh, uh brian lara of course catalyst neil smith we had we had just a fantastic, fantastic team. Uh, someone who could bring something to make make a difference to the team in every department. So that was a great time, and and and, and the membership went up. Well, it's something like eighteen thousand. Yeah, we've never had a membership as high as that. But they came. Everybody wanted to be associated with Warwickshire County Club. Everybody wanted to come and sponsor. Everybody wanted to come and add adverts, and it was just. A wonderful, wonderful time to be around, and uh, you know it was. Um, doesn't always go like that. We we had our problems, but uh, um, that was. Uh, I did enjoy that. Well, in working with you on this book, of course, I talked to all those people, and I'm going to end. And we're going to end now, Dennis, and pass over some questions for the thing. But I wanted to say this: that every single one of the players that I spoke to, Trevor Penny. Andy Moles, all of those players all pointed to the single unifying figure who brought Bob Woolmer, who brought Brian Lara, who brought Steve Rouse in to do the grounds. They all point, who brought um, the, the squad together, they all point to Dennis Amos as being the most significant figure. And very, very few players, great players, actually make it from the game through into administration to become top administrators. And very few of those then go on to become leading governors of the game. And, and Dennis, to that extent, you're unique. You even out Les Ames, Les Ames, who was a great administrator and did great things at Kent and got a hundred hundreds, but never had the governance role that you had in the game. And for those people who want to read more about Dennis, his book, Not Out at Close of Play, was actually published early on the 1st of March. And for those of you who want to get a signed copy of Dennis's story, and there are many, many more stories, including what Dennis thinks about Kevin Peterson, um, the foreword by Jeffrey Boycott, and what Jeffrey Boycott thinks about Dennis, it's all in there. And Dennis will now tell you how you can get hold of this, uh, a copy of this book signed by him, and that will also give a contribution to youth cricket. Uh, so if you buy a copy from what Dennis is going to tell you, you'll be making a contribution to youth cricket, as well as getting a signed copy of one of cricket's legends, 25 first class hundreds, Dennis Leslie Amos. Dennis, how do they buy your book? Okay, well, it's in all the bookshops, uh, so you can uh, get it cheaper, but if you, if you come through me and care of Warwickshire County Cricket Club, 
and uh, you send your check, the book costs 20 pounds, uh, then um, we, uh, we will make a contribution to youth cricket at Warwickshire County Cricket Club. So write to me at Warwickshire County Cricket Club, enclosing me 20 pounds, and uh, I will send you a signed copy um, back and uh, we'll, five pounds of that will go to youth cricket at Warwickshire. There you are. There you are. So, thank you, Dennis, for all you had to say. Thanks, Jim. Fabulous, fabulous, guys. It was a lovely tribute at the end, Jim. And thank you so much, Dennis, for a fascinating hour. Um, and I'm sure, I'm sure a lot of people will want to buy the book. Does the, the 20 pounds includes the postage, does it? Just to be clear. Uh, it, it, it doesn't. If you do send a stamp to just that, uh, that would be brilliant. Okay. 